Hi, Blood Talk fans. Today's topic is tibets on the core antibody. Without further ado, let's get into it. Tibet number one. The reaction temperature of core antibody. When we say core antibody, it doesn't mean that the antibody antigens cannot react at body temperature. Some antibodies react to both 37 and room temp. So be careful when ruling out. We classify an antibody as a core antibody because the optimal reaction is below body temperature. For instance, big S could react in both body temperature and lower. This means that if the patient has a big S antibody and need a blood transfusion, we have to give the patient big S negative units. I already have a video on how to select units and cross match. So if you want to see those, link down below. Tibet number two. The detections of allo antibodies in the presence of cold antibodies. Here are some of the procedures for the detections of allo antibody in the presence of cold reacting auto antibodies, including the following. One. Pre-warm technique. Pre-warm technique is when the red blood cells and serums are pre-warmed separately to 37 degrees before they are combined and continue the process. Number two, the use of anti-IgG rather than polyspecific AHG reagent. Number three, co auto absorptions of the patient serums with autologous red blood cells to remove auto antibodies but not allo antibodies. Number four, absorptions with rabbit electrocytes or rabbit electrocyte stoma. Tibet number three, anti-M and hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn. While most people anti-big M is in IgM forms, some people also make anti-big M in IgG forms. And some people make more in IgG form than the IgM. The IgG forms of anti-big M could cross the placenta and attach itself to the fetus red blood cells. Because of this, at least in my hospital, we stay on the cautious side of things and perform monthly titer on the pregnant patients with anti-big M. If the titer increases, it is one of the indicators that the IgG of anti-big M could be crossing the placenta and attacking the fetus red blood cells. Of course, we would look at other test results before concluding, but the title is one of the indicators. The antigens of anti-big M can be detected as early as 9 weeks gestation age, and they are well developed at birth. This makes it very useful for paternity exclusion cases involving newborns or the very young. This is beside the point here. But because the infants have very well-developed big M antigens at such a young age, and if the mother make anti-big M in IgG form, this poses danger to the fetus. Although it's rare, there has been case reported of anti-big M causing hemolytic defeats of fetus and newborn. In the case reported by Mash and Stones, a woman with anti-big M reactive to a titer of 1000 at 37 in albumin test carried twins. One of the twin died in utero and the other required exchange transfusions. When we tested the DAT in the infants, the DAT was only weakly positive. One of the explanations could be that all the red blood cells that was coated with the anti-big M was mostly hemolyzed. Tibet number four, surgery on patients with anti-big M. Since big M is a co-antibody, and we do not worry about it if the big M does not react at 37 degree. However, if the patient is about to go under surgery, especially heart surgery, this would raise the concern. During the surgery, especially the heart surgery, the patient's internal body temperature would drop down below 37 degrees. 
and that would make the optimal reacting temperature of M antibody. In this case, it might be wise to give big M negative units to the surgery patients, even if big M does not react at 37 degree. Tidbit number five, transfusions of a patient with anti-big M. As long as anti-big M does not react at 37 degree, it is not clinically significant in red cell transfusions. It is sufficient enough to provide a random unit that full cross match compatible without typing for big M antigen. Sometimes compatible units carry the big M antigens. Tibet number six. There are allo co-antibodies and auto co-antibody. If it is not confusing enough, we have to add the word allo and auto. Allo came from allo antibody and auto came from auto antibody. Besides grouping antibodies by the optimal reacting temperature, there are other ways to classify or group antibodies, such as allo antibody and auto antibodies. Allo antibody is the antibody that our bodies make when exposed to a non-self antigen. And auto antibody is an antibody against self antigen. In other words, auto antibody is your body attacking yourself. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends and I shall see you all next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.